Hey guys, KRX Jesse here with another review. This time I'll be reviewing the Henshin Belt and Fossil Deluxe Arc Kivat and Ray Kivat set from Kamen Rider Kiva. This is a limited edition set released alongside Kamen Rider Kiva the movie, King of the Castle in the Demon World, and consists of the components needed to create Arc Kivat, the Henshin item of escaped convict Takashi Sugimura, and Ray Kivat, the Henshin item of Takato Hiramine of the Worldwide Wing Association, to transform into Kamen Rider Arc and Kamen Rider Raid, respectively. It includes several uh, components. One Mecha Kivat, one Belt, two Faces, and one Fuesel. We'll start by looking at Mecha Kivat, the main component of the set. We see it here, molded in two shades of grey plastic, with silver and gold paint, and little bits of translucent red plastic here and there. And this is based mainly off of the Kivat Bat, the third mold, originally used in the deluxe Kivat Belt, which was the first belt released in the Kiva series. But it is modified in mainly the face area. So looking at the face, we see it's mostly flat, with the two red eyes that jut out from the rest of the head. We have a lot of cybernetic detailing all around, within the ears, and all around the face. It also has a hinged jaw right here. And the button on the top is a different color and shape than the one on the Deluxe Kivet belt. We also have the wings, which are here with this shape. A silver, av silver outer lining, gray molding detail with texture on the inside. They both open up like so, using these kind of sliders and uh, rotation joints on the back. And the detailing and texture also goes to the back of the wings as well. Have the back side with a battery compartment and an unlocking hinge for when it's attached to the buckle. As well as the two feet that are used to attach to the power roost of the belt. That use spring-loaded lower, well, back claws to easily attach and detach to the belt itself. And, uh, in front we have the speaker here, two clips to which the face attaches to, and the main activator for its gimmick. There are these two buttons here within the right ear that the two faces each press down one of when attached. And uh, that's uh, basically all this for the details of Mecha Kivat, so putting it aside, we'll now look at the belt, which is a black version of the key buckle belt that was included with the deluxe Kivat belt. And we can see the power roost, the detailed emblem here, which is a bunch of rings all within each other. In the backing, uh, little rings with chains on them, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, whole of the rest of the belt, which has a chain detailing going all along it, that runs along, which runs vertically every few notches, as well as consistently running horizontally. And we ha also have the belt holder, which is about the same shape as the one included with the Ixa belt. And we can also see the detail on the back side of the buckle. It has a little ring, and the detail similarly to the in similar to the textured detail on the wings of Mecha Kivat. Mecha -Kivat. And uh, we also see that it unclips here, with even more detailing on the connector, on both sides, and it just easily slides right in like that. We can then take a look at the two faces. We have the arc face for arc kivat, which is uh, kind of like an iron mask, has all these screws or rivets that are molded right into it, not actual screws. A little bit of a brownish-orange coloring 
around the eyes, a little jagged jawline, as well as a, uh, some jaggedness up along the top, and these uh, two uh, holes which, with, with, with the sound from the speaker, which is right here, can come out of. And these will also serve an aesthetic uh, purpose a little bit later. We then have the ray face, which is uh, painted mostly with this glossy white paint. We have a const a basically constantly furrowed brow, as if to give an angry expression. This silver nose, a little bit of red around the eyes, and uh, kind of metallic blue for the ears and the forehead, as well as another speaker grill along the forehead here. The paint used on the ears actually does have a little bit of, uh, well, texture to it. I don't exactly know quite why, but it probably has something to do with the molding, most of all. And this one also has a lot smoother and rounded shape for the mouth and top of the head, and the more jagged shape of the arc face. And finally, we have the Fuestel here. Within the contents of the set and the instructions, it's referred to as the Wake Up Fuestel. I mean, Wake Up Fuestel. But within the uh, continuity of the movie and the show, it's called the Key Fuestel, because it has a key molded into it. It's gray plastic, with a key molded right here, as painted gold, and it has a couple little holes in it within the key handle. It has a molded detail here on the side, but it doesn't seem to be representative of anything. Maybe a doorknob, but that seems unlikely, and even if it is, that would be likely coincidental. So now we can get on to the electronic features. We can turn it on right here. And so... You see, you saw the eyes turn on like that. Pressing the button while it's just Mecha Kivat gives you that. Putting the fossil in its mouth in any of the modes will make it do this sound. While it's Mech, while it's Mecha Kivat, attaching it to the key buckle. Makes it do this sound. And then putting in the fossil again, you will get this sound. And that's all the sounds it does as Mecha Kivat. So now we can start off by attack. We can uh, start on the two main, uh, well, functions, main modes of the toy. First, we attach the arc face, like so. And uh, we can spread open the swings, and uh, while it's in this mode, unattached to the belt, by pressing the button on the top, it'll uh, speak several phrases. Yeah, it must go. Do -do. Uh, that means, shall we go? Or, well, shall we go? And Doron is uh, kind of an arm up here of sort. It's like to vanish. And next we have this. Uh, that's just you know, more Doron. And that second part means, my, what shall I do? That's the little activation sound you get sometimes, which is also the same as the start up sound, or the power on sound. That one means, let me bite. And the phrases mainly mix around with each other. Now, uh, there's one more, I uh, should be able to find it. Uh, it's in here somewhere. 
Yeah, just bear with me. Okay, yeah, there's that first part, which means I'm fed up. He said, Mo yada. And that means I'm fed up. And uh, that's basically all the phrases for arc cuvette. We can then take off the arc face and put on the ray face. Now we can press the buttons and get a different, and we can get voices from Ray Kivat, who has a different sounding voice and a different personality. Oi. I mean, that's basically just saying, hey, Comfy. I'll bite. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Comfy. Cool. Uh, there. that's, yeah, more, I'll bite. Comfy. Uh, I don't really know what doke doke means, uh, but that second part, uh, he's saying, it's a nuisance, or you're a nuisance, or you're in the way. Okay, okay there's still more. That, mean, that one means, let's freeze, which uh, means to actually do the action of freezing something else. And there's one more. Just like with Archivet, bear with me, it's in here somewhere, I just gotta find it. Okay, there's the one. It means something of the It means something along the lines of I've come to solve all your problems, but it seems you've done that for me. Now that's a, I guess that's a rough translation. I've tried looking it up and putting it through translators, and that's the best I could get out of it. So anyway We'll start off with now we've gone through the phrases. We can go through their transformations and twistle activation. So to start the transformation, you hold down the phrase button, like so. Have a standby sound, which is identical to the one on the keyback belt, and their eyes glow. So now you attach it, attach the feet to the power boost, and let it fall into place. Like so. So here's the arc cuvette belt, where we see now that with the with arc cuvette upside down, his face uh, kind of resembles an iron skull, with the two slits that are for the sound, looking like a skull's nostrils. And these kind of looking like jagged fangs, as well as two large fangs down here. And the eyes give a more menacing shape when they're like this. Now for the Fwessel, this hinge reveals uh, that there are two little clips for the Fwessel to attach to. Slide into place, and it'll press this button using a uh, spring-loaded lever that'll go at, can push in and then goes back out. From, so from there you can lower it down. Okay, let me just get that back. It can sometimes fly out because the clips are not completely uh, that large. And so to activate the wake-up sound, just, put it, just push in the whistle. And that is the wake-up sound for Ark to turn into his power-up form, Legend Ark. And you can repeat that by pushing in the whistle again.
And in case you, uh, in case you didn't hear it, I, I'll just uh, say it again that his power up form is Legend Arc. So then we can unlatch it here and take it up and detach it. And uh, I guess I should have told this to you guys a while ago, but uh, since YouTube uh, set up a new policy where people who follow the guidelines well enough can get videos longer than 15 minutes while not being partners, uh, I follow. it seems that I've followed the guidelines that well enough, and um, maybe a month or two back, I was given the ability by YouTube to post videos longer than 15 minutes. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about the running time of this video because I now have the ability, because now I can go over that regular time limit. So, continuing on, we attach the gray face again. Hold down the sound button. Get the belt, attach him on, and let him fall into place. And so we see here, upside down, we have the Reykjavet belt, where this kind of resembles the face of a monster, or, or Yeti, which is what Ray is based on as Ark is also based on a demon, so this demonic skull thing is also fitting. And you got these kind of coming down like, uh, grizzly fangs. And now it looks like he's got these big red eyes. So, taking the fossil again, and putting it into his mouth, we get... Oh, whoops, that was an accident, I'll just pick that back up. <laughs> Just gonna put this in and we'll get Ray's wake up sound. Wake up. And that's for unleashing Ray's gigantic claws that you can use to perform a special attack with or just to attack with. And you can cheat by just pressing down this button directly while we're holding the jaw open. <laughs> Meaning any fossil will do. But you are specifically supposed to use the key fossil. And speaking of that, this also has a notch combination. So we can use it, let's move this aside, we can use it with the Ixa belt. So turning it on, putting the fossil into the slot, and activating it. It says, Gekijo ni Iko, which means, let's go to the movie. And Kivat also has a movie related phrase, when the key fossil is used on him. So, bring everything back. And, uh, thankfully, this thing falling is not too much of a problem. Just setting everything up here for my conclusion. Uh, actually, before I go into conclusion, I'll talk about his voice. Interesting note is that Art Kivat and Ray Kivat are both voiced by Norio Wakamoto, who was a famous voice actor known for such roles as Cell in Dragon Ball Z and M. Bison in the Street Fighter series. He's also become known in recent years for the voice, for being the voice of Emperor Charles, Emperor Charles Z. Britannia in Code Geass. 
And uh, so we've got all this together. Just like so. Overall, the Arc Kivat and Ray Kivat set is a nice belt. It's a I mean, it is a little bit light on features and functions because it's a movie belt and it's not quite supposed to do that much. But the fact that it does go into the effort of basically mixing around, taking just a few phrases for each and mixing them around into different combinations is a nice touch that means that you won't quite have all the same sounds repeating over and over again in some kind of hand because it's random and the sounds are mixed all together. It's, ni it's nice design. The transformation and fussel noises are also nice. It's an easy pass, but it's also an easy thing to pick up. I mean, I guess if you want to get something that's kind of like the Kivat belt, but don't quite want to spend the uh, high amount of money that you'd get these days to buy a deluxe Kivat belt, then uh, I would say pick this up. And I'd also say definitely pick this up if you're a fan of Kamen Rider Arc, Kamen Rider Ray, or both. Because this is a good representation of Arc Kivat and Ray Kivat. So, there's that. And uh, overall, definitely a pretty good toy that I can recommend to Kiva fans, and, like I said before, fans of those two writers. So, please rate, comment, subscribe, and check out my blog at krx50.blogspot.com. And for now, this is KRX50, writing off.